the detection of short faults that affect test access port pins as well. After watching this presentation, you will be able to explain what are the consequences of a short fault involving test access port pins and uh, also how you can detect it. Um, we will consider the specific example of uh, X16, which is a short fault between TDO of uh, this device and TDO of the preceding device in this same boundary scan chain. Actually, um, the um, jumper that enables us to insert this fault can be seen in this photograph there and uh, IC4 is the device in the middle. The question that we have to consider from the start is what are the fault detection conditions for this fault? Well, since this is a short fault, the uh, general fault detection conditions for shorts will apply here as well, meaning that uh, we will have to uh, drive opposite logic values to both pins. That is to say, if we drive a 1 to this output, then a 0 will have to be driven to this preceding output, or vice versa. Uh, however, we should take into account that uh, uh, this output, when uh, it comes from initially, will will be shifting through the instruction registers, and since this um, is part of the boundary scan chain in the board, this fault should be detected by the integrity check stage in the beginning of the test protocol. That is to say, um, the first thing that we have to do is to shift in some instructions and when doing so you may recall that the uh, IEEE 1149.1 standard requires that the last two bits of the instruction register captures 0, 1 and as, uh, as this uh, pattern of 0, 1 is shifted out we will toggle the logic value in every TDO, TDI interconnection so as the 1 comes out we drive a 1 and then as the 0 comes out we toggle the TDO, TDI interconnection to 0 and uh, we do so with the objective of finding out if any faults are present. However, since this device, uh, the instruction register of this device, when going through capture instruction register state, it will capture 8.1, which is the standard pattern captured in the uh, Texas Instruments um, scope family of devices. And since, since these are uh, just two um, components of the same device, then 8.1 will be captured here as well, meaning that uh, we will be shifting out a logic pattern which is the, the same as the one that is being shifted out here. This means that at least during the first eight clock cycles, the uh, logic values present in these two TDO pins will be exactly the same because we are shifting out the same pattern from the two devices. And uh, as such, the uh, X16 fault will not be detected in the first eight clock cycles. It may be detected afterwards if we shift in something that will cause the fault detection conditions to take place. However, the um, the test program for this case is actually very simple as you see in here because besides the uh, standard uh, state reset command which we use to uh, start any test program just as a precaution that we start from the reset condition then we just need one command to uh, detect if this fault is present the uh, scan through the instruction registers command will, in this case, shift in 16 bits, which, uh, uh, according to the argument of uh, uh, TDI, are all zeros. Actually, all zeros is the external test instruction code that we are uh, sending to the two devices. So we are sending uh, zero, 00 in hexadecimal 
for this device and 00, zero as well in hexadecimal for this one. So we are setting both devices in external test mode. Uh, however, we are saying that we expect 8181 to come out at TDO and uh, 81 is uh, what we know that will be captured in the instruction registers when we go through the capture instruction register state and we expect 81 to come out in both and uh, so the 16 bits that we expect to see coming out from this TDO pin are 8181 and we know the value of each one of these bits so the mask word is all ones, that is to say F, 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 F. What will happen when we execute this program? Well, uh, using the remote uh, boundary scan test workbench tool, we uh, are able to execute the program either in a single run or in step mode. And if the fault is present, as you see here, uh, it will be detected and flagged because the output will be different. Actually, what happens is that uh, during the first 8 clock cycles, as we have already said, what comes out here is the same as what comes out there because both devices captured 8.1 in their instruction registers. But then we are shifting in all zeros, so after the uh, first eight clock cycles, the, the first zero that we have shifted in, uh, into this device will come out to TDO and that will make a difference. So we actually expect that uh, uh, after the first eight bits are shifted out in their correct expected values, as you see here, then it will just be zeros coming out. If we click into the uh, waveforms tab, what we will see is uh, indeed that the first uh, 8 1 pattern is shifted out. Recall that 8 1 is uh, 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1. So the first uh, 8 bits uh, that were captured in the instruction register of this device are shifted out properly, but uh, then after the first Eight test clock cycles, the uh, clock cycle number 9 will cause the uh, short circuit to be detected, the reason being that the um, zeros that were shifted into this device are now starting to appear at TDO and that will make a difference there because of the short fault. Actually, if we compare the um, faulty response with the fault-free response, you will see uh, what I mean. To uh, facilitate the um, understanding of what is happening, I have uh, another slide where this difference is shown in more detail. You see here that the uh, this is the initial condition after a capture instruction register which loaded 8.1 in the two instruction registers and this is the short circuit condition affecting uh, the uh, right device here. So we have 8.1 in the instruction register of this device and 8.1 here as well and the short circuit condition present. That's what is represented here. Then seven uh, test clock cycles later, what you will see is that uh, the uh, first seven zeros have been shifted into the uh, instruction register of the device on the left, and this one has moved to this position here. Now, uh, at this point, there is still uh, no fault detection condition in place because we have a 1 at this TDO and a 1 at this TDO. However, in the following clock cycle, this one will have moved into this position and the first zero will come out. And uh, um, it is now time that this word has been transferred to these positions and uh, this one that was there eight clock cycles before is now in this position. Now because of the short circuit this zero will overdrive the one and what will happen is that on clock cycle number nine if the fault 
is present, then the 1 will be overridden to 0 and it will be detected. Well, I uh, leave uh, you with this question. What would happen if only the first 8 bits were shifted out instead of 16? Would the fault be detected?